Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have a very fun 80s classic today. We learn how to do Body Talk by Rat. This one rocks. It's got some very interesting kind of rhythms in it, really kind of driving rock rhythms. <laughs> Uh, and a very cool guitar solo by Warren Demartini. So we have a lot to take a look at here. Uh, now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell so you can, uh, you know, know when I see a new video. So hopefully you'll watch the videos and, you know, like and comment on them and watch the whole thing, actually. It's really good. Um, and kind of try to support anything um, we do over here to keep these songs cranking out on YouTube. And if you really actually want to support, um, you're going to see a link in the description below. It's a link to my online guitar school. It's the Geo365 Academy. That uh, link will give you a free seven-day trial to it. Now, one subscription, you get access to all of my courses, from uh, complete courses for beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. Uh, you name it. It's all there. I go live every weekend just for the chat for acad with Academy members, like kind of a live stream. Um, it's a lot of fun, so hopefully you'll come check it out. All right, I'll see you there. So let's, let's get into this song. We're in uh, E-flat. Standard or D sharp standard, however you like to call it. Every every string tuned down um, a half step, so I'll, I'll put those notes in the description if you don't know what that is. Um, but let's crack into this clean intro. This is played by um, Warren. So. <laughs> This has a really pretty pronounced, obviously, chorus on it, but it also has a delay on it. So you're going to hear those notes bouncing around. If you slow it down, you hear a lot of notes going on that is not actually part of the picking pattern. Uh, it's because the notes you played earlier are echoing. Um, so, uh, but if you if you see him play it live, it's a little bit more dry, and you can really kind of hear the pattern that he's playing. It's pretty simple. So let's uh, take the delay off so you can hear that. So we're going to start here with the fourth fret here on the A string. I'm going to call this an A string, not an A flat. Just going to call it like it's a standard tune guitar. We have um, fourth fret of the A, six on the D, and six on the G. And you're going to have the high E string open and the B string open. So, so it's that chord. So you're going to play the fifth string first, then the high E, B, and G. open A, and then the top three strings again. So it's just like the bass note change. So you can see that dun 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 So it's kind of got that little feel about it. It's not straight. It's not played like that. It's like... So then we go to, we're going to still hold these same two uh, notes on the, uh, the D and the G of the 6th fret, but you're going to reach over here and grab this 6th fret down on the low E. So this picking pattern is going to pick from the 6th string to the, uh, so the E string to the D to the G, and then back to the 6th string. And then we're going to go up to this, um, right here, this uh, the seventh fret on the on the low E, and you're going to replace those sixes that you had packed to pick up because you moved up here with just your index finger. And the same picking pattern: sixth string, fourth, third, back to six. That's what it is. So all together. When you go back to that C sharp here, you can grab that note first and then put the rest of the hump to jump all the way back that quick. So we get this. So he continues that, and then Robin comes in with uh, the chords, the distorted chords underneath, and it sounds like this. I 
actually at the end of the uh, clean section too. Go back and grab that B power chord in the second note of the A. So you can do that when kicking distortion for uh, if you're playing Warren's part. All right, so Robin is going to basically be playing this C sharp power chord off the uh, fifth, the fourth fret of the A string, and then goes down to the open A power chord. Goes. And then we're going to have this. So this chord is a little odd. You know, can if you put it, if you just got kind of what Robin's playing, this is kind of implying a B flat minor seven chord. Um, if you add on what um, is going on with uh, Warren, then you've got a, um, a it's implying a B flat minor 11 chord. But um, so, but what Robin's playing here is this six fret on the low E, four fret on the A, and the uh, six fret on the D. And then we're gonna resolve that to this B power chord of the seventh fret of the low E string. And then take that down to this G sharp, which is at the, uh, uh, the fourth fret of the low E. Same power chord, so we have this. And then we're going to go start over with this uh, C-sharp again. Same first two chords, first three chords, actually. And then we're just going to, when we get to this B, the fourth chord, we're just going to hold it instead of holding that just show. So all together for Robin's uh, part when he comes in in the intro. And now we get to, which is really kind of the main riff of the song, the verse. It's really fun to play. It looks like this. All right, so it's got a repeat from there. So I'm going to start here. Now, how you play this is pretty important because they, they're doing some pull-offs and stuff. So I'm going to play this at the third, um, uh, of the second fret across the D and the G with my ring finger and my pinky. So I hit that first. Then you get, um, I play the second fret on the low E string. Okay. And then so after you pick that a little bit, just down up. You gotta pull off two to zero, so it's then back to the second fret there on the D and the G, and then you gotta go to two and one. So we have the second fret there on the D, first fret on the G. So, so you see, before I between the two chords, I hit the low E string again, and then go back to the second chord. So this. And then we got to get back to starting over. We have a zero two on the low E string. So this. And then we get back to the beginning. Now the second time through, instead of going, we do this. So it's the same two on the D and the G first, and then the open E low E string. And then take this to this E power chord, which is at the second fret on the D, fourth fret on the G. So we have this. So both of those together. All right, now getting back to the beginning, we have a little bit different. Instead of going zero, two on the low E, it has the open A string, then the second fret on the low E. So it's a little bit harder picking across those strings like that. So then from there, it's the same as the first time through. So all together, we have this.
Then here, it's very hard to hear on the recording, but what, what I think is going on here is we have this little It goes, it leads up to a D, open D power chord, but they do this little So it sounds like he's doing It sounds like they're almost bending up to this C sharp, but what they're doing is from the third fret They're kind of pulling that down So they do that three, then pull it open A and then pull that three again. <laughs> but it happens really fast. And let that ring and then do this. So it's kind of almost reverse. So you have to let that ring, then hit the open D string a couple times. And then the, that quick bend on the third fret on the A and do an A power chord. So this. Then. And then we're just kind of, uh, we get that final A power chord and a couple hits on the opening A string. Hit the second foot there on the D and the G. A couple hits on the open A again. And then the second foot there on the D and the G. And the first foot on the G. So we have this all together for the whole thing. And then we start over. And then we get to the chorus riff, uh, which is really unique. It looks like this. So that's it's kind of got an odd timing to it, and there's some notes that you know when I see them play it live, they don't do the. You can kind of pick up a couple of things that are going on in the original recording, that uh, when I see them play more recently live, at least they they kind of just don't really do every time. But anyway, it it might be there, or might not, but it sounds like it is on the recording. So anyway, we have this. So we're gonna have this this fifth fret on the D and the G. And now the, uh, you're going to be kind of doing that because those um, eighth notes on the open A string. And then you're going to go with that, the fifth fret on the D and the G. Then move that note on the G string down to four for the next verse. Still keeping the five on the D. So this. And then we have this. Same two chords, but just timed a little different. Um, so we have this. Now, Warren just grabs those right there. But then he goes down and grabs this F. So he grabs the third fret there across the D and the G for the next chord. And I think Robin, when he played, he went and grabbed the full B flat chord. Then he jumped over to the F. Because you can hear that note in there real quick. But I don't see Warren doing that. So we're, we're basically going to be doing like, uh, so Warren. So after that chord, jump back here to the first fret there of the low E string. Then you're going you're gonna to grab the third fret there on the D and the uh, G again. Resolve it to an F major chord. First on the low E, third on the A, and the D, second on the D. So we have this all together. Kind of still struggling on that. And then there's that little line that starts the chorus riff over. So it's about the midpoint of the chorus riff, really. 
and that's zero, one, three on the low E. So this is palm meter right here. And then three, two, zero on the A. So this. And then the second time through the course, a little bit different. And there's, this is where there's a part in there, I don't really seem to do a live here, but you can hear on the recording, it looks like this. So I, I think I've seen Warren do it a, like a couple times more recently, but he doesn't do it every time. So it's basically, you start with the same chord, kind of still rotate on that A there. But here. From there, it just does this little melody on the G string, four, five, four, while you still play the fifth fret on the D each time too. So, at first one, listen, you kind of hear those, just hear the five to four, but if you listen really closely, you hear them, there's that melody. That melody actually moves on the G string. So we do that, then, or go ahead and transition to this third fret on the low E for the bass note. So it is, we have this. That, and then we go back to the two fives, and then the five four again, and then you grab the three on the D and the G, and back down to the F on the low E for the bass note, and the low, first fret of the low E. And then, it, when you hit those, these two chords again, you're gonna jump up now and grab the octave, kind of the F uh, power chord up here at the eighth fret of the A string. Now that's what Warren does. I think Robin kind of stayed down here for the second F. So uh, basically what Warren would be doing. I think Robin stays down here the whole time, and like I said, he also grabs that one that first time. Right here. He grabs that full B flat major chord, a B flat power chord, and then goes down to the F real quick. So then we're back to the verse again, and then the chorus again, so nothing new there. And then we get to the bridge section. So the bridge section is the same clean guitar part. Uh, so Warren jumps up and grabs that, uh, but the chords under it are a little bit different than they are in the intro, well, at least in different orders. So um, what Robin's doing underneath that is like this. So basically what it is, is the first, when we first heard the, at the beginning of the song, we heard the, him do that. So that B to G sharp at the end of the riff. The, and then the second time through it was just without that. Just stops on the B. So that's reversed during, that, uh, during the bridge. So it's just this C sharp to A to the flat to the B, hold the B there, and then the second time. And then repeat all that. Then we get to the uh, Warren's solo. Uh, now the solo is over the verse. So it's just, uh, Rob's gonna go back and grab the same um, verse chords. And we have Warren doing the solo. Solo, um, there's a little section that was really kind of hard to get kind of note for note. Um, 
Well, at least I spent a lot of time on it, which I didn't, I guess. Uh, but um, it's, so I'm going to be pretty close here, but there's going to be one little run that I'm probably not going to be completely over. It's kind of like he sounds like he's kind of just winging it a little bit at one part. And um, that part, uh, you kind of, it's going to make it sound as close to him as I can. All right, so it looks like this. <laughs> So that thing has got some uh, kind of crazy runs in it. It's, it's very quick. You know, Warren's an amazing guitar player, and so there's really that kind of one in the really in the middle. It's kind of just throwing a bunch of different licks at us uh, around that kind of F sharp minor pentatonic. That one might not be kind of you would consider note for note, but for the rest of it, I think we can get pretty close. So it's going to start with him kind of kind of tremolo picking up the E string. And then we uh, just kind of as you slide up, and then so once you get up here, you're gonna play the 19th fret twice, and then 17 to 16 twice, and then 19 to 17 on the B string twice. So it, then when you play that 17 the second time there on the B, slide down to the 14th fret. And then back up to the 17th fret there on the B string and back down to 14. So Then you, you play the 17 on the G, go back to that uh, 14th fret there on the B. And then from here, we go pretty much straight down. Kind of straight down. So no, no kind of uh, back and forth notes. So when we get here to the 14th fret on the B, then just descend 17, the kind of the blue scale, 17, 16, 14 on the G. 16, 14 on the D, and then 16, 15, 14, that blue scale again, on the A, and then take it down to the 12th fret there. Let's try this. And then, it does that little lick after you get to the A here. We're gonna play kind of a bend and release in the 14th fret on the A, pull off to 12, over to 14 on the low E, back to the 12th fret on the A, and then back to the 14th on the uh, A with a lot of vibrato. Now from there we have this. So we have this. Sliding from 14 to 16 on the A, then play 14, 16 on the D, play 14 on the G a couple times, and then back to 14, 16 on the D string. Then we have this. So, after you do this little 14, 16 on the G, kind of a pre bin on the 16th. Pull off to 14, and back to that bend. Then we have that little descending uh, minor pentatonic again. And it might not be going straight down there. Could be something like that, which is just a 14 on the B string. Pull off 16 to 14 on the G and the D, and then go back to the 16 on the G, and pull off 16, 14 again, and work your way back down again to the D string, 16, 14. And then 16, 14 on the A, uh, pull off to 14, slide down to 12, and then slide back to that 16. So we this. All right, so this next section is where it's, uh, I'm not really gonna get it note for note. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it, it's a lot of legato patterns being played here um, that 
uh, across this F sharp minor pentatonic right here. So first of all, the notes are going to be just at this minor pentatonic, you probably know, already know, 14, 17 on the low E, even though he's not going to use that string, and then uh, 14, 16 on the A, D, and G, and then 14, 17 on the B and the high E. All right, so that's where the notes are going to be pulled from. This. And it sounds like he's just kind of winging like a lot of legato licks as he's ascending up to the scale. So. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm not really kind of planning what I, I'm doing there. I'm just kind of starting on the G string. Work our way down the A and then go back to the D and work our way back down the A. So that, you guess. And then we start working our way up. He actually does do the blue scale here. So when he gets to the G and the B, he does that. You kind of hear that lick in there, which is like 14, 16, 17 on the G, and then 14 on the B. So and then come back down. So I'm sorry, I'm not doing it really note for note. It's kind of. So he does have that blues note there. And then kind of whatever your favorite legato lick across 14 and 17 on the B in the height. So I just wait until I get to that part where we have the bend of the 17th fret. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it when I get to that part. So. Uh, And when I get to that bend of the 17th fret, that's when I lock back in with what he's actually doing, which is. Oh, sorry. So it's kind of like a, a bend of the 17th fret on the B, and then play 14 on the high E, pull off 17-14 uh, on the 17-14 um, on the B. And then we play 17 on the high E, 16, hammer on 17, pull off to 16, pull off to 14. So we have this. And then pull off 17, 14 there on the B. So we have this. Then jump up here to a bend at this 19th fret on the high string. Hold that, and then pick it again. Release uh, and pull off to 17. And then go over to 19 on the B string and bend that a step and a half. So it sounds like the 22nd fret. All right, so that's what's uh, kind of going on for the most part for the solo. Like I said, it's not one of those, a couple of those licks are not really, don't really lend themselves to get it note for note. Um, but, um, from there, we go back to the verse and then back through the chorus again. And then we do have an outro solo that's just, this one's over the chorus. Um, and I'm not gonna really cover it. You can really kind of um, play over it in like A minor, A minor pentatonic over that if you want. He does start it with some. Some unison bends there, the fifth fret there on the B string, and the seventh fret there on the G. So kind of do some unison bends there. That's bending up the note on the G string, the seventh fret, while you're keeping the note on the B string, and you make a unison. And then he'll do it at the sixth fret. And then third fret. Under that fifth fret there on the G. So that kind of thing. And um, he'll also do one here at the 10th fret there on the high E string and the 13th on the B. And later on, he'll do one here at the uh, 17th fret on the high E and then the 20th fret there on the B. The same unison bend. And now he'll throw some licks, especially. He'll throw some licks there out of A minor pentatonic or A minor blues or whatever. And then. So I, I generally don't do like to do a lot of um, outro solos because they're just there's a lot of vocals going on all over it, so it's really buried in the mix anyway, and it's kind of 
uh, fading out and all this stuff. So I just kind of avoid them. But anyway, if you really want to kind of play over that, just play some A minor, A minor pentatonic, A minor blues, and it'll sound good. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a really fun song. It's got some really cool riffs in it, um, and, and that solo is killer too. So I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.